Welcome everybody to the Facebook Live edition of City Church on a Wednesday night. We are so glad you decided to join us to worship the Lord Jesus Christ, bring honor and glory to his name, and to pray to him and to read his word and study his word tonight. Our prayer is that the presence of God is felt in your living room or your bedroom, wherever you may be watching, if you're sitting in an office or in your car, you're watching us online, we just want the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit to invade where you are, fill the atmosphere with his presence, and give honor and glory to his name, and let God's touch be upon you. That's our prayer. So we're going to open up with a word of prayer. We welcome you once again. If you're new with us, type new in the comments. Let us know you're here for the very first time. We welcome you to City Church on a Wednesday night. Let's ask God's blessing upon the service. Heavenly Father, we seek your face. We call upon you, O Lord, to come. Fill the sanctuary with your presence, your power, and your glory. Let the power of the Holy Spirit so fill this place that it transcends the camera and fills the living rooms of the people that are watching there at home. We pray for the power of the Holy Spirit to touch their bodies supernaturally and bring healing to their lives. Minister to them, lift them up, encourage them, encourage them in the name of the Lord and through the power of the Holy Spirit to lift them up. Bring healing to bodies, bring transformation to souls. Bring deliverance to those who might be struggling tonight. Let the power of the Holy Spirit come on them where they are. And do a great work in all of our lives tonight, we pray. We give you the glory for what you're about to do. We thank you, Father, for visiting this house and visiting every room that's watching us, every camera that's on us, every, every media device that's watching us right now through the streaming network. We just pray for the power of the Holy Spirit to transcend and touch them and lift them up. Bring glory and honor to your name tonight, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's enter into worship and praise the Lord God. See the tomb where he lay. See the stone roll away. He is risen. He is risen. He's alive. See his hands.
Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. They make miracles, promise me. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Light in the
Oh, uh, some uh, Pop Tarts. And there's only one box, a big box of those that will break up into individual packages. Of course, they come in prepackaged. So don't tell them what you'll get. It just depends on when you come through the line. But if, we, if you are available Sunday at 1 o'clock, we want to bless you. And uh, thank Conway of Hope for their provision. And we're glad to be able to serve the community in this way. Don't forget also, our services online are every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Spread the word. Let people know that we're here. And then also we want to bless the Lord every time that we come together with an act of worship that we call worshiping the Lord with the offering that we bring. Now for you at home, obviously you're not here. For those of us that are here, we're going to bless the Lord with our giving and bring our offering to this basket up here. But at home, you can go online to our website at citychurchjackson.com and you can give at any time. You can give after the service is over. You can give any time during the week. And we receive that there by electronic deposit into our bank account. And so that will be a great way to give to the church and support the church during this time. You're also welcome to bring it by the office if you're local. Some of you have been doing that. And many of you have been mailing it, which is the best way and the safest way is contact-free that way. So you can mail it to the church office at 129 East Vandalia, 129 East Vandalia here in Jacksonville, 62650 as a zip code. So at this time, we're going to bless the Lord with our giving. Let's pray a blessing over the offering. Father, we thank you for the privilege of giving unto you the offering which you've given to us to give you. It all belongs to you, Father. It all comes from you. You said in your word that you've given us the ability to create wealth, which means you give us the ability to work our jobs, own our businesses, and bring money into your hands, Father. And you bring money into our hands, so we're not stingy with it. We bless you with our giving. As an act of worship right now. We pray that what we're about to bring into the kingdom of God and our acts, through our acts of giving and worship will spread the gospel around the world and make the kingdom of God grow even bigger and stronger. And we thank you for this in Jesus' name. Bless the offering now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'll place mine in the basket and others that are helping us with worship and tech are doing the same thing. Welcome once again to the service. We hope that you're being blessed. The worship was really good, and uh, we always feel the presence of the Lord here every time that we come together to worship Him. And you're invited, and we're able to come back together. If you're watching this online, you'd love to come check us out. We'd love to have you come join us for a Sunday morning service or a Wednesday evening service. It's, a, it's quite an experience live, and so we want to encourage you to join us there. Tonight, we're going to continue through 2 Timothy. We're working our way through the book of 2 Timothy on Wednesday nights. And tonight's teaching is called Faithful Sayings, and the scripture we're working from is from 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 11 through 14, Faithful Sayings. Paul writes to Timothy and he says, This is a faithful saying, for if we die with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord, not to strive about words to no profit, to the ruin of the hearers. I'm going to set this over here. If I walk off screen, I'll be right back. And here I am. Did you miss me? All right, we're going to talk about the faithful sayings that Paul's talking about. Faithful saying number one, we shall live with him. It's the hope of the gospel, the fact that we shall live with him. If we die with him, Paul says we shall live with him. To give your heart to Jesus is to die to yourself or to die to one's self. There's a sacrifice involved here. It's a sacrifice of the will. It's a sacrifice of the heart. It's even a sacrifice of ownership. We die to ourselves when we accept Jesus as our Savior. And the Apostle Paul, we talked about this last week, and maybe even the week before we've read the scripture. The Apostle Paul is our example. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. He said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. In other words, I've died in Christ, yet I'm still alive on this planet. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me, and gave himself for me. Let's pray. Father, we ask your anointing upon this word. Let it accomplish the purpose where it is sent. May it minister to the hearers there in the, here in the sanctuary and there at home watching on their computers. 
We give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you crucified with Christ? If you are, nevertheless, you live, God said in his word. So this tells us that we, we put God's will above our will when we have been crucified in Christ. We put God's will above our will if we are crucified in Christ. Perhaps the Christian's biggest struggle is wanting his or her own way over God's way. Now we dress it up and we try to make it sound spiritual and sometimes we'll say the Lord led me when it's just something that maybe we wanted to do. But sometimes I think the biggest struggle we encounter is us wanting our will or our way rather than wanting God's way. There's a man in the Bible named Ananias who the Bible records in Acts chapter 9 on the, on the road to Damascus, his, the apostle Saul was converted. Jesus appeared to him on the road to Damascus and brought him into the kingdom of God. He was blinded by the light of the glorious presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and had to be led by the hand into the city of Damascus. And after a few days, God told a man named Ananias to go lay hands on Saul that he might receive his sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's one of the most comical conversations, I think, in the scripture. Because God tells Ananias, taps him on the shoulder and says, I want you to go lay hands on Saul that he might receive his sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And Saul doesn't know this is going on, but Ananias says to God, basically, Lord, are you sure that's a good idea? I've heard this man has authority to kill Christians and you want me to go see him. I don't think I want to do this, Lord. And God said to Ananias, go. He's my chosen vessel. It's what we're talking about. Sometimes our biggest struggle is getting our will out of the way so we surrender to God's will. If you've crucified in Christ, you've been crucified in Christ, you will put God's will above your own will all the time. Think of the times, think of all the times and ways as a believer you've tried to tell God what to do. It's almost comical, isn't it, that we think our way is better than God's way and He's God giver of all the universe, creator of all things, knower of all things. He has the plan from the beginning to the end in mind, and yet we want to tell him why we shouldn't do what he's asking us to do. Think of all the ways we assume the role of God, when we should take on the role of servant and even the role of slave. When we've been crucified with Christ, we surrender our will to his will. When we've been crucified with Christ, we replace our heart's desires with the heart and mind of Christ. Not everything we desire is blessed and ordered by the Lord. Sometimes our flesh gets in the way and we just want what we want and we want to spiritualize it and say, I think God wants me to have this. But is it really God? Not everything we desire is blessed and ordered by the Lord. So the crucified believer will ask, what is your will, Lord? What should I do?